conversations are painful. But I, I, I've learned as a, as a leader in business that actually they're happening in your organization anyway, all the time. And I think that you have a choice as a leader between letting them happen and continue to carry on you know, under the table and in the corridors, where I think they're destructive and uh, damaging, or have the courage to bring them out you know, onto the table. So I think business leaders have no choice but to uh, you know, have the courage to convene those kinds of conversations. And my experience um, at Discovery has been that actually even though people are uh, trepidatious and anxious, they always end up being very positive, even though it's painful and difficult. To do so I think it just, you know, I would, without quoting a well-known brand, just do it. I think that's what, <laughs> that's what has to be done. I actually think, although at a visible level it feels like things are moving slowly, and in some respects they are, I think when you look inside many organizations in our country, there's a lot more change than is often visible from the outside. So I think that's important to record. Um, and I think there's a huge amount of effort going on. I, I, I can't speak for, for all businesses, even all in the financial services environment, but I can tell you in ours, um, it is a burning platform. It's something we take enormously seriously. There's a huge amount of effort that's going on. Um, I, I think we have particular successes to be proud of. I would, um, I, I would highlight what we've done in um, investing in initially small black-owned businesses in supply development, real supply development, that have turned into massive businesses that supply us and dozens of other companies. So I think in procurement, there's been a lot of progress. Um, in, 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 in junior, middle, and even starting to be in senior management, a lot of progress. Um, I do think um, many businesses are still struggling to make the real gains at the top um, and in shareholding. And those are, are areas that I think are, you know, I, I wouldn't for a minute want to apologize on behalf of business. There's a lot more to go. If I can flip to the, you know, the white male fear issue, it's a very, very difficult, thorny problem to raise, and, and I think, um, you know, it does highlight some of the complexity. So these are people, and you know, I, I can count myself among them, but these are people when I, I think about my colleagues in, in our business who have often been in the business for 15 or 20 years, worked their way up from the call center into senior management, now looking around and asking themselves, well, am I going to be passed over for promotion because the business needs to fill uh, certain quotas in terms of promotion? And, you know, we take, as leadership, we're taking those quotas incredibly seriously. But as an authentic leader, I've got to also worry about those white colleagues who've given their all um, and continue to. And, you know, we're fortunate to have a business where our leadership team doesn't, uh, we, we have very little turnover, people stay uh, in the main. And you know, the, I'm not offering any solutions here, but I am telling you that these, uh, this is one of the examples of the complexity of driving a, a strategy of diversity, inclusivity, transformation, but you've got to take everybody with you. And actually you've got to accommodate uh, the, your white colleagues you know, and your black colleagues at the same time. For many years, we've, we've thought that the simple answer to that was just keep growing very fast because you'll create more and more opportunities for everybody. That's not infinitely possible. Um, so, you, know, it is, you, you raise a real challenge. I, I'm, not, I'm not pretending to have the answers. 